here's going to be an example of how to do replace the pads and what you to do to uh, freshen up your brakes if you have drum brakes. See here, uh, completely disassembled is your complete setup here. And over here, what we have is still assembled uh, what your brakes look like. That's kind of dark, but um, what I'm showing you is the... So I, this is on my 66 Impala, has front drum brakes. But what I'm doing, uh, just doing one side at a time, and the reason being is these can get kind of complicated, and if you don't do them every day, you forget how it goes back together. So what this does, but if you only do one side at a time, is you have a reference to go back to. So if you forget where exactly one part goes, look on the other side of the car, and there you can see the other side and say, okay, just have to make a mirror image of, the, of it. And then you can put it back together like that. So I went through and I took the upper lower control arms off and got a new coil spring in there and sandblasted everything and new tie rods and all that. Sandblasted everything and painted it just a flat black color and didn't honestly care too much if I did a great job. So you might see some spots that are not so pretty, but uh, just to kind of get the surface rust off. Now, one thing you should always do if you're doing drum brakes is replace this brake cylinder here. This is what forces, there's two rods on either end that come out and this will push onto the shoe um, to push the shoe into the drum so that's how you can stop. And the reason that you should always replace this brake cylinder here is because these are more of a common wear item, they tend to go out and the thing is they only cost like twelve dollars to replace so if you're already into your brakes just replace it and then you don't have to worry about it even if it's not bad just replace it and then that way you have no worries otherwise if you don't replace it and you tear it apart and you get five thousand miles down the road and then it starts to leak and then you have to replace it and re-bleed bleed the brakes and take the whole thing apart again anyways so just replace it and then you only have to take it apart once for an extra twelve dollars it's worth the worry free okay so here's the actual drum that came off of this side here and you can see somebody painted it before I'm gonna blast it again and put some higher temperature paint on it because you can see it does get a little bit warm and so it'll melt that paint off and this has been sitting in my garage for a while so you can see some rust starting to come up but one thing you want to do when you take your drums off take them up to your local auto parts store I went up to O'Reilly's and I think it cost, I think, $24 for the pair of drums here. Now, it costs more for a truck, and I think it might even be cheaper because these are for fronts. Wow, that's getting really bad on that side. That's okay, it'll all wear off. Um, but anyways, what they do is they basically they stick this drum into a lathe, and so then they take off this inner layer here, and so then it's even all the way around so that your brake pad is going to sit in there flat and flush and there's no um, grooves or anything across the surface here so that anything can get caught in there so this will give you your best braking power and it's just a quick freshen up of your drum and I'm not sure exactly how many times you can reuse these but um, just take it up there and they'll tell you if you can or not usually you can so just get it returned and it's a cheap cheap fix instead of replacing the whole drum Okay, so I found my flash button here, but if you look, here's my old brake cylinder here, and you can see how rusty and that is. It's not leaking yet, but I still bought a replacement for it. This is on the other side, of course. And then right in here, you can see right here and here are the pistons that push into the shoes here. And then you see there's just a bunch of springs and everything to hold this into place, so... That's why I left this side together so that I have my reference point for the other side. Now one thing you're going to want to do, there's a couple of tools that you're going to want to buy. Uh, one, this is just a brake pliers and on one side it has a cam on it so that when you go to take your spring off, you put this right on that knob there and you can turn this around and it'll pull the spring onto this cam right here you can pull your spring right off and that makes it a lot easier and then for the reassembly you have a hook right there again to pull the spring and put it back on and then another tool
to buy is just this piece right here and this is for the actual uh, shoe right here um, it goes right over top of this clip so this needs to be pushed in and rotated 90 degrees you can see right in there that it needs to be just turned 90 degrees right there so there's a pin that goes through on the back side of the hub and you gotta make sure that's not spinning for you but you just push this in spin it at your 90 degrees and then that'll come right off with the spring and then you can pull the shoe off once you have all the other springs and everything off okay the first step <clears throat> and I think this one's one of the hardest is to get the first pad on now the first pad of course you have this uh, the lever here and you gotta have your spring in and of course I forgot my cam on the back side so I'll get to fight with it, getting that in but it's just a pain to hold everything up into place and get it on. It needs about three or four hands but once you get it on you're happy with yourself so I'm gonna try to put that cam on that I forgot. Okay so I got the other side of the brakes on here uh, again just this uh, pin here that you gotta turn that 90 degrees uh, kind of fights you again it's really quite a pain and it's going to seem like it's not lined up, but you just got to fight with it a little bit and you can get it into place. Um, make sure again that you got your piston here that's right, goes right in the gap here. Make sure it's turned the right way. Uh, if you have it turned sideways, it can just kind of slop side to side, but here there's two tangs that go in here and it slides right in there so that it can't fall out. And then, of course, don't forget this little kind of wing here that sits on there um, then you can put your this is the cam that I was talking about that goes on this piece goes on and then you can start putting all your springs back on so get all that on and then just uh, kind of start working on the springs and yeah okay so I have everything together now I got all my springs put on uh, should all be put together right and just one thing I didn't mention was this piece here on the bottom. So what this does is it actually separates the brakes. And so what you want to do is if you have new pads here, is you want to close this in as small as it will go. Because what it does is as you're running, this lever here will push down on this right here. And it will cause this to turn, which then pushes these out. So... What that does is because as your pads wear down over time, this will expand, causing your pads to push out more so that you can still use a full pad instead of having to put your foot to the floor all the way just to get your pad to contact the drum. This will get push the pad and keep it right at the drum for its entire life. Uh, the problem with these, what makes it difficult is to actually set these uh, the right way. So... Um, basically you just got to turn it in all the way, put the drum on, and spin it. And if, uh, if it spins freely, then it might be a little bit too loose. Try tightening it down, spin it again, and if it contacts a little bit too much, loosen it. Um, for me, I don't have an access point, which kind of sucks, so I can't spin it and turn it at the same time. Um, most of the newer ones are going to have that, so there's going to be a hole right behind here. So what you do is you, there's actually a special tool for it, but a screwdriver works just as good. Uh, you stick this through the hole on the back side, and you just spin this looser or tighter, um, depending on which way you need to go. Now keep in mind that what, you need to look at where your hole is and where your screwdriver is going to be contacting it, but whichever way it is, when this lever goes down, this spinning this way, that will be expanding more, so that will make the drum tighter. So just keep that in mind, and then set your brakes. What I like to do, again, is I just spin the, put the whole tire on, put it all together, spin it, and it will spin pretty freely then, and then keep spinning it and tightening it until it stops right there. It'll, it should just do it kind of in within a couple clicks, and if it stops, then you go the other way. And that's when it gets a little bit difficult because you have to get a second screwdriver to push this lever out of the way and loosen it just a little bit. 
but then it should spin freely and then you should be set pretty good right there. Okay, so when I said I don't have an access point, I was wrong. Um, see, right here I have this little hole right here. That's what the access point will look like. Normally on the newer vehicles, at least, it's on the back. And you can see right through there, that's my, uh, what do you call it, the spreader thing there, the bolt, um, my adjustment screw. So I can stick a screwdriver through there and push that down to self-tighten. Now you can see... I have the drum on right here, and it's spinning really freely, no resistance at all for the brakes. So, I need to get that tightened down quite a bit, it seems like. So, um, normally what I'd say is if you can get the tire on there, and have if you have a hole in the rim where you can still get to that access point, that would be the best way to do it. Uh, for me, uh, just for, I know I'm getting, the, reti the tires are getting replaced because they are going flat. Uh, so I'm going to leave the tire off for my convenience here. So if you have lug nuts that you can put on, um, mine actually don't fit either because they're only threaded so far and they have a hole or they can't go all the way through and they can't get deep enough to hold the drum on. I don't have any washers convenient, so I'm just doing this the hard way and holding it on there tight and taking a good guess. Um, and then I'll check it again once I get the tires on there. But the way you do it again, like I said, it's a lot easier with the tire on there versus, or even just the drum on there, because you get a lot more torque or momentum to spin your wheel really freely like that, rather than just the hub. But you get there, you're spinning it here, and then you just slowly, if you go one or two clicks, spin it. If it doesn't catch at all, go on a couple more clicks spin it, a couple more clicks, spin it. Uh, the easy part about it being on the back is that you can keep um, spinning it as you're tightening and so you don't have to stop like I, how I do now to click it some more um, and then check it again. You can just keep spinning as you're tightening it up. But once you get that done, just uh, take the vehicle out for a drive and if you can actually just not use the brakes um, just go once around the block or so, and again, not using the brakes if possible. You get back, put your hand on it. If it's hot, of course, be careful that you don't burn yourself. But if you put your hand on it and it's not hot, then the brakes are okay as long as you're stopping fine. And if you put your hand on it and it's hot, you might want to loosen it up just a little bit because if you don't use your brakes and they're getting hot like that, that means they're rubbing so, uh, just a little bit too much at least. So. That's uh, just one, one last test that I do is just the hand check uh, without using brakes. So there it is right there. That's how you do drum brakes.